Hello, my name is Christine Stavridis. I'm going to be presenting my final project. This lesson is an introductory lesson. It is meant for fifth graders. The focus is on vocabulary. It is a fifth grade science lesson focused on light. It is part of a light and sound unit. Students will be able to identify the shape and parts of a transverse wave. Students will be able to classify materials as opaque, translucent, and transparent. This <clears throat> Components of this lesson include a, a short introductory video, a PowerPoint presentation, a company a lecture, guided notes, a word sort, and an online review game. There are also some extension ideas. Directions for the lesson. You will begin the lesson by sharing, discussing what students may already know about light. This would be a KWL type activity. Um, you could use small sticky notes to have students note what they already know about light and what they are wondering about. Um, students would use flashlights then to trace silhouettes onto black construction paper. This activity is just meant to be an introduction. Um, you could guide students to experiment a little bit with the size of shadows they create. And then once the silhouettes are created, you could save them for a separate um, language arts activity. There is a short video with an introduction of light from Study Jam, so the link is here. Um, then you would use the attached PowerPoint presentation to deliver the information about light to the students. You would stop throughout the presentation to um, show them some items along the way. Um, after they've reviewed the PowerPoint presentation, you would have them use rope to model the shape of a transverse wave. After they've modeled the shape of a transverse wave and identified the major parts of the wave, you would use the foldable I created to have the students create guided notes, which they would then glue it into their science notebook. Um, then once they're done with that, you're going to have the students complete a sword activity, which would be done in pairs. And then after that, there is a Kahoot game that I have created that would be played as a review um, activity. Once they've done that, then you could have a review discussion and just go over some facts that students have learned. Here is the PowerPoint presentation that I would use with the students. I'm going to open this up so we can see it. Um, you would start by talking about light, transparent, translucent, and opaque. And at each point along there, you could stop and show them um, some examples of specific items that are transparent, translucent, and opaque. Um, there's a power slide on reflection. There's a slide on refraction. Once you are done viewing the PowerPoint and going over that lecture with the students, you would move on to the next part of the lesson. Um, the next part of the lesson is using the foldable, which here is my foldable here. This is the front of it. Word was used to create this foldable. Um, you would distribute this to students and they would cut out along the lines here to separate the front flaps. And then inside they could put some simple notes. So they have trans transverse wave, transparent, translucent, opaque, reflection, and refraction. And they would have space inside to further add notes. Once students were once students, sorry about that. Once students were finished with the foldable activity, you could just you would just distribute the pre-cut and pre pre-sorted word sort activity to students in pairs. They would work in pairs to sort list of objects, and this is part of the word sort here, into transparent, translucent, or opaque. So they have to decide if each one of these was trans um, and translucent, transparent, or opaque. And that, that would be completed in pairs. Once that activity was completed, then you could go into the Kahoot game, which the link is um, in my earlier slide. And then after the Kahoot game, you could facilitate a discussion at the end of the lesson. Um, some extension ideas would be a, um, a review crossword puzzle, which is here, and you could also give them a written quiz if you wanted something like that. Um, other extension ideas. This, this lesson is part of a larger unit on light and sound. Um, the discussion could definitely be lo lo longer and you could focus more on what students already know about light and what their questions might be. Um, you could give homework consisting of a fill-in-the-blank type worksheet. Um, students could be given the crossword puzzle, which you saw. Um, you definitely want to follow up up on this lesson with some activities focusing on the hands-on use of flashlights and creating shadows of different sizes. There's also some other activities you could do with flashlights. Um, Follow-up activities could also f focus on the different similarities and differences between light waves and other types of waves. Um, there is an assumption that students have completed a unit on uh, oceans previous to this, so they would have some familiarity with other types of waves. And the next part in this unit would be about sound. Assessment. Informal assessment is going to be achieved throughout the lesson. One thing you want to do is monitor the student responses to the review game for accuracy. 
you could you would be able to tell if the majority of students were able to answer the view questions accurately. Um, also, as students are working on the word sort activity, you can go around and monitor that for accuracy and help students make corrections as needed. Um, you also want to monitor responses to the opening and closing review discussion. Um, at the end, you'd want to have students list some facts that they had learned, make sure that those are accurate. You could use the sim a simple written quiz based on the questions from the view game. I gave you an example of that. Students could also be asked to sh sort a list of items into th of the three categories of transparent, translucent, and opaque. You could simply put this on the board and have them sort them as a, um, a very quick exit ticket. Differentiation. Prior knowledge is activated through an introductory discussion and hands-on activity. Um, information is presented multiple times in multiple formats, orally, written, uh, through written words, visually, with diagrams, and also physical models. Students are responding and interacting with information in a variety of ways. The PowerPoint was narrated, and it would also be provided to students for independent study and review. Students could work in small groups or pairs to complete some of the activities. Students are physically interacting with material throughout through the creation of the model of the transverse wave. Um, and students are using a foldable to fill in and support them in taking guided notes. The pace of the lesson can and should be adjusted to allow sufficient time for student response and for students to think through answers carefully. There may be further modifications needed for students with specific learning disabilities or specific um, in specific categories. Um, for those with cognitive or intellectual disabilities, they may need to be directed to review the PowerPoint several times themselves. Um, the other thing that would support most students would be thinking carefully ahead of time about how students are going to be paired up for the um, sort activity and even the introductory activity. <coughs> um, for students with physical disabilities, um, there's some physical writing required by students here. So you could take single word answers, could be accepted. Um, you could provide pencil grips or those types of tools also to facilitate physical disabilities. Um, the foldable was meant to be distributed to students and have them cut and fold it, but that could be pre-done for them. Um, the study gems video, you could certainly turn on the closed caption for students who have auditory hearing issues. The PowerPoint was designed with pictures and graphics. So that would support students with various various um, disabilities. Um, <clears throat> those with sensory disabilities might be sensitive to the lights. So you would need to be very careful with the volume of your video and also the Kahoot game, the volume that you're playing, things that there. Um, you also would need to take care to um, to be careful with the flashlights and using flashlights um, and being sure students are instructed how to use the flashlights properly. Um, those with communication disabilities <clears throat> can be given some options for completing the hands-on activities. Um, they could be completed independently if you if they would prefer. Um, the Kahoot review game is designed to be played individually, but it could be played in partners or even in teams, depending on the needs of your class. The Kahoot game could also be modified to be played either on iPads or personal computers, whichever one would be easier for your students to access. Um, <clears throat> the Kahoot review game also can be modified to even be played as an offline type activity where um, students use whiteboards to just write, put answers and display it that way. Then of course you would have to score it independently offline. The <clears throat> online products. Um, PowerPoint was used to create the presentation to create to assist all students in accessing, processing, retaining crucial information. Crucial vocabulary words were bolded and underlined. Uh, graphics, diagrams, and pictures were used in the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint was narrated with an easy to locate speech icon on each page so that students could independently review this as needed. The review game was created online and it was created to review and emphasize important content. The game was designed to be interactive and motivating. You could even offer a small prize for the winner. The questions in the game should be projected and the teacher should read them out loud. Um, graphics and pictures were also incorporated into the game to uh, correspond to the PowerPoint presentation. Offline products. The foldable and word sort activity were created using Microsoft Word. Uh, the optional crossword puzzle was creating, created using a, word, a website called WordMint. The font size and color were chosen to be clear and easy to read. Uh, pictures were used to help students make connections and visualize the material. 
The foldable can be used to attach to, you can have students attach their um, notebooks for future reference and review. The sort activity could also be glued into student notebooks, um, or you could have the students make a handwritten chart with the same information. Um, there was a rope that was used to create a simple physical model of a transverse wave. Connection between material and cur curriculum. The foldable word sort and PowerPoint presentation, as well as the Kahoot review game, were all created to be used together and to match each other. Similar use of graphics, fonts, and terminology was used. The material covered is taken directly from the Fairfax County Public Schools curriculum for the fifth grade light and sound unit. Um, this was just a modification of the actual information was taken directly from the Fairfax County Public Schools curriculum. Thank you very much.